What's up everyone, back for another beer review, and today is not only day four of the 10th annual 10 Days of Pumpkin, it is also Wednesday, which of course means it's time for another West New York Wednesday here on the channel, and the beer I'm reviewing today comes from the Brickyard Brewing Company, and they're out of Lewiston, New York, and this is their Grumpkins and Snarks, and this is the 2023 release. So they're calling this one a pumpkin dark lager that comes in at 5% alcohol by volume, 15 IBUs, at the time of review and this can is just over three weeks old so it's been a while since i've reviewed something from brickyard on the channel i've only reviewed a handful of things from them but when i saw that they were releasing this i was like i gotta get this for west new york wednesday i reviewed the vast majority of the west new york um beers for uh the 10 days of pumpkin over the past uh, five years so i was looking for something different and this fits the bill so i don't know if this is a german or czech style dark lager maybe just an american dark lager but they do say on the side here it says brewed for things that go bump in the night aged on pumpkin spice and pumpkin puree it's best enjoyed with crisp weather and spooky tales brewed in can in lewiston new york so yeah really looking forward to it um this is the second lager that i'm reviewing this year the uh day one was a pumpkin meritzen uh style oktoberfest and pumpkin spice hybrid whatever you want to call it really good so i'm hoping this is kind of like in the realm of a german or a czech style dark lager just with some pumpkin spice and maybe a little bit more of a meaty body from the pumpkin and i'll tell you what that's pouring out kind of wicked like it has like a murky look to it so <laughs> it doesn't have that clarity you'd expect sometimes from uh the style so yeah i mean they're aging it on the puree and on the uh, spices they don't say specifically what spices but doing spices of some sort so yeah that is a very dark brown it's gonna look pitch black on camera but it has this milky almost like uh turbid uh kind of dark brown look because i can i can see a little bit of like ruby red hints and lighter brown here uh but for the most part hold it up to the light yeah that kind of looks like a, like a like a darkly like a, like sometimes you get the the roasted coffee that has more of like a dark brown look than a black uh the head there was about a finger of this nice like off brown colored head that is now dissipated to a thin film i'd imagine that's from the pumpkin and the spices doing something because it was there and then it was gone so yeah anyway that's good nose <sighs> that smells really nice wow so yesterday for a day three i reviewed a uh, pumpkin escobar from prison city which was a uh basically a coffee pumpkin porter and it didn't drink like a porter it looked more like a brown ale or a red ale or maybe even an amber ale and I just wanted more of like that porter base. Here, I'm getting the dark lager base. There is a nice, you know, toasted uh, brown bread or dark bread kind of kind of nose. There's chocolate. There's a little, like a slight coffee kind of roast. But then I'm getting the pumpkin uh, spice. I'm getting a little bit of earthiness from the pumpkin itself. There's definite nutmeg, cinnamon, allspice for sure. Maybe even a touch of either coriander or ginger. I would say more coriander. It doesn't have that like ginger kind of zest, that zip. It smells really good though. It's, it smells like someone took a dark lager and kind of aged it on pumpkin uh, puree and, and pumpkin spice. It's exactly what I want out of the nose of this. The pumpkin spices are not too dominant. Uh, you get the base beer. I'm also getting a little bit of like a, like a slightly floral, maybe herbal kind of hop hop note very slight i really like the chocolate in here though it's like a like a dark chocolate yeah it smells really good i want to get into it cheers everybody all right so first things first i think the nose is better than the taste the nose was really given off a succulent kind of like it's just it was so aromatic and it, and it was kind of like very deep in the nose if that makes sense it had a deep aromatic kind of kick in the taste dial back a bit body on this one lower side of medium body five percent i'm fine with that it's not thin and watery uh i don't ex expect it to be like huge body wise it is five percent and it, adds to the drinkability, but it's not watery at all. The mouthfeel, it's very um, effervescent, uh, moderate carbonation, smooth going down, not really soft or creamy, didn't expect that. So body mouthfeel are solid. The taste on the other hand, right up front, again, toasted, dark bread. 
there is uh, a little bit of a um, mixture of like a, a coffee with a dark chocolate, and it gives me mocha vibes, right? The, where, right at like the, the first uh, quarter of the palette, first third of the palette, and really cool right after that toasted dark red. As it passes through, the pumpkin spice kind of hits. Again, more cinnamon, allspice, all spice, uh, nutmeg, and maybe a touch of like a coriander is kind of hitting me. This one finishes full on dry, very mild bitterness, but very dry, balanced from that perspective, because there is, and this isn't too sweet to begin with, so this maybe leans a little bit more dry. Uh, so for those of you who like dry beers, if you're looking for something that's not an overly sweet pumpkin beer, this would definitely be something I'd recommend because it has a nice dryness and it's not too sweet on the palate. 5%, you really can't taste it. There is this underlying earthiness uh, could be coming from the hops, could be coming from the pumpkin. And the finish is that spice uh, with a little bit of herbaceousness, probably from uh, whatever hops they're using. Super easy to drink. Absolutely nothing wrong with this. Kind of in the realm of what I expect out of this. Uh, I, I guess I got a little too excited because the nose uh, was very rich. Like the nose was rich. It's almost like, oh, man, is this going to be a little bit too much for a 5% dark lager? So I... What part of me says it's awesome the nose didn't carry over because I think it would be too rich and decadent. But part of me is like, I wish it did just to see what it would be like in the glass. Because I think what's in my glass is a super drinkable pumpkin dark lager, which is kind of probably what they're going for. Uh, but, you know, as somebody who really loves flavor and like flavor explosions, I would have loved for that to carry over and still be super drinkable. I don't know if it's possible uh, because it was so rich, decadent, sweet kind of smelling that it'd probably be hard to balance it out in the taste. But overall, this is really nice. Is it amazing? It's not amazing. But I didn't expect the pumpkin dark lager to be amazing, to be honest with you. Um, but what I'm drinking in my glass is, is pretty damn tasty. I have an extra can that I'm probably going to send to Ryan over at Ryan's Beer Reviews. He's doing 31 days of pumpkin beers this month. And um, I think this is something he would enjoy trying, even if he doesn't end up you know, really liking it. Um, it's just something different outside the box. You don't see a lot of pumpkin dark lagers. Uh, so I had to pick this one up. So Grumpkins and Snarks, the 2023 release from Brickyard. I'm going to give this a straight four out of five. I think if the nose carry over, this gets a high four into a low four two five. Like if everything carried over, uh, I really like the artwork. I like all the the eyes and the shadows. I don't know if you, you see all those, but it's really cool and it's just it's simplistic but really 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 well done. So uh, kudos to Brickyard for releasing something like this. I need to drink more of their beer. That's on this guy. So uh, price point availability. Here's another great thing. At the brewery, I think it's eleven ninety nine or twelve bucks for. Uh, I think it's twelve bucks for a four pack. I went to uh, one of my favorite local bottle shops of choice, Premier Gourmet, Amherst, New York. Shout out to them. They're always fantastic. Um, I picked up a uh, a single of this. I think the single was like $250, $259, but a four-pack was on sale there or with the Premier card, which is like their membership card, $10.99 a four-pack. So $11 four-pack, cheaper than at the brewery. So really good price point, especially for something as cool as this, aging on pumpkin puree, pumpkin spice, you know, pumpkin dark lager. Just Pretty damn cool. So uh, if you've had this one before, which I'm sure like 99.9% .9 of you have not, but if you're from the West New York area, Buffalo, and you like pumpkin beers, grab this one. I think they only had a little bit of uh, left at, excuse me, at Premier. I know the brewery still has it, but I would say give it a go. It, it's something, again, in this day and age to be unique and different, it's hard to do. So seeing them do this is really nice. Could I tell you if this is a Czech or German dark lager? Not really. I'd say it probably leans more towards like the German side of things. But I don't really know everything else. You know, the base, while it's there, it, a lot of it gets covered up by the adjunct. So it's tough to say. So I uh, appreciate everybody stopping by for day four of the uh, sixth annual 10 Days of Pumpkin uh, and also another Western York Wednesday. Check back next Wednesday for another Western York Wednesday. We'll be back to regular beers or regular beers. There's a couple uh, I might, um, I, I'm not going to mention them because I, if I don't review them, I don't want to be, you know, called a liar. But, um, yeah, there's a couple of ones that I, I want to get to, and we'll see if I review them next week. So anyway, I uh, appreciate everybody stopping by for another beer review here on the Beer Patrol. If I didn't mention it 5%, you really can't taste it. Have you ever had a pumpkin dark lager? There's definitely pumpkin lagers out there, but a pumpkin dark lager? Let me know. Post in the comment section. Maybe I'll try to seek it out next year. We'll see. Anyway, check back tomorrow. Day five, we're doing um, from Lexington uh, Brewing and Distilling uh, Comp uh, Distillery. Um, their, uh, what is it? Their Kentucky Pumpkin Barrel Ale. I'm looking forward to it. Till the next one. Cheers.